Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about some CNC fundamentals. I'm going to be talking about work offsets, tool offsets, and also just the basics of how axes and the coordinate system works within a CNC machine. A lot of what I'm going to be talking about in this video isn't going to be specific to, let's say, the Tormach or any specific CNC machine. It's going to be applicable to something like Pathpilot control or a Mach 3 control, or even extend a little bit beyond that to something like a laser cutting machine or a 3D printer. All of these machines are CNC machines in that they use an X, a Y, and a Z axis to move some sort of tool, whether it be a laser or a mill cutting head, and that is what they use for positioning. So this is going to be a little bit specific to the Tormach just in the examples that I use. However, it will be applicable to pretty much any CNC machine. So let's look at a couple different types of CNC machines. This is a 3D printer. A 3D printer is a CNC machine. CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. All that means is that you have some sort of machine that interprets numeric control, uh, mostly G-code, and we'll get to a little bit of that later. Um, it interprets G-code into machine movements. So it will translate those movements into moving the Y platform here, or we've got an X up here, and then over here and here, the um, whole assembly here moves up and down for the Z movement. In addition to the X, the Y, and the Z movement, you also have a head, um, which in this case is an extruder head, that will move this gear, which will feed filament into the extruder head, and then it will extrude out the bottom, and it will use that to build up a part. A 3D printer is an example of an additive CNC machine, meaning it starts with nothing here and then builds up. Something like a um, CNC machine, um, the Tormach out in the garage, is actually a subtractive, meaning it's going to take um, a solid block of something and then subtract away from it. So these machines are very similar and they both have the same kind of movement, it's just that one is adding material and one subtracting material away. This is a laser cutting machine. This is also a CNC machine. It uses the same basic principle. The main difference between this is it uses a laser for cutting and it has a movable gantry so the table itself doesn't move. The movement of this machine is very similar to um, one of those big gantry style CNC um, wood cutting machines or a CNC router. If we lift this up, you can see that it has this um, gantry. So this would be your Y axis and then this would be your x-axis. It uses a series of mirrors positioned here, here, and here to move the laser from the CO2 um, laser that's in the back of the machine into the cutting head and straight down. This particular machine does not have a z-axis. However, some of these machines do. The z-axis would be used to move the workpiece up and down, and the reason for doing that is to get the focus of the laser in the right spot for maximum cutting power. Unlike the 3D printer that's additive, the laser cutter is subtractive. When the laser beam hits your material, it vaporizes it and it goes away. You can use this to either engrave on material, or you can use it to cut completely through a material. But in any event, it's a subtractive process, whereas the 3D printer is additive. A milling machine or a CNC router are also both subtractive processes. So why does any of this really matter? Well, the difference between an additive machine and a subtractive machine is huge when we factor in a work coordinate system. In a 3D printer, it's always going to start at the build platform and build up from there. There's really no question as to where that piece is going to end up or where it starts out at because it's constructing it inside and it's constructing it from the build platform up. However, something like a uh, laser cutter or a CNC milling machine it has no idea where you're going to put in that piece that you're then going to subtract away from. If I was just to take a hunk of wood and shove it into the laser cutter and then just say go, it has no idea really where it is in relation to its total machine volume. You have to specify that and still you know you have to specify the height and other factors. With a milling machine it gets even more complicated because every bit that you put into the machine has a different length and it's going to be then proportionately further away from the workpiece or closer to the workpiece if it's a longer or shorter bit. So the machine has to know not only the bit that it's working with 
where that workpiece is, but then where it is in relation to everything else. So I'm going to start talking about that, but first before we go into that, we need to talk about how the machine views its own axes, how it views the X, the Y, and the Z, and how it, that all relates to the work coordinate system. I have this block of aluminum sitting inside the mill to give you a visual representation of what the X, Y, and Z axes look like inside the machine in relation to the spindle here. Um, if we first look over at the Z axis here, you can see that the Z has an arrow pointing upwards. All of these arrows are pointing towards the increase or the um, positive direction. So if we look at the Z, if we want to increase the Z axis, it would look something like this. It would move in this direction. If we want to decrease the Z axis, it would come down like this. So typically when you run your software for your um, workpiece, you would have a zero plane on the top of the workpiece. So when you're cutting into it, you're cutting into the negative direction, plunging down this way, this would be your zero plane, and then you would go in the positive direction this way. And if we look at the X, positive direction is this way. One thing that might get a little confusing is it's always in relation to the cutting tip itself. So even though the table is moving this way, X positive is this way because we're looking at it as the tip relates to the cutting surface, which is this. So if I want to move one inch this way, that's one inch positive because it's in the positive direction from relation to the cutting tip to the cutting surface or your workpiece surface. So X positive looks like this. And in much the same way, the Y moves in this direction, like this. And if we want to move Y in the positive direction, we will be moving the tip this way. And so this gives you an idea of how the coordinate system looks like inside the mill when you're running your CAM software. These are the directions, Y positive, X positive, Z positive, and in this case, this could be our origin to where this would be our zero, zero, zero point. So let's say we would set up the mill like this, and this would be our zero point, and we would move positive in the X, it goes this way, positive in the Y, it goes this way, positive in the Z, this way, and then obviously the reverse would be negative in those directions. When you first turn on the machine, it's going to ask you to reference the axes. It's going to have you reference the X, the Y, and the Z. All this is doing is having you reference the zero point as the machine sees it as its uh, physical and mechanical limitations. So it's going to bring the head all the way to the top, it's going to hit the limit switch, it's going to move the um, table all the way over to the side, hit that limit switch, and then all the way back, hit that switch. And this just simply tells the machine that it's reached its mechanical limits. These are just the machine coordinates. So that is the process for the machine finding its origin essentially, but we need to figure out a way for it to find the work coordinate system. And I'll show you a couple different ways to do that. So let's assume this is your block of aluminum that you're going to machine. It's sitting you know, somewhere in the machine like this, and you can have a reference in the middle here. You can have a um, reference on any one of these faces. It doesn't really matter. That's just up to how you programmed it in your CAM software. And we'll get to a little bit on that later. Um, but let's say just for the sake of this demonstration that we're using, this corner is our zero point. So then X positive would be here, Y positive would be there, and anything above that would be Z in the positive direction. So we need to find where this point is, and this needs to be our new coordinate system or a new zero, zero, zero point. Um, a couple different options you can do is, um, this is a um, Tormach edge finder, it's electronic edge finder. It's a really simple little thing. It has um, LEDs inside of here. It has this um, little ball at the end of it that's um, 0.4 inch diameter all the way around. And really the machine is grounded and there's a little um, section right here that you can see that's isolated from the rest of it. So when these two pieces come into contact, the LEDs light up. It's that simple. Um, the machine is already grounded, so this is sitting on the grounded machine. When it touches that, the lights light up. And if I use a uh, parallel, you can see that if I just ground these two together, the light lights up like that. So you would just manually jog the machine into the edge as soon as it lights up, you would be negative 0.2 or half the diameter of this over. So if that's negative 0.2, right on top of it would be zero. 
And so you'd use that to set your zero point here. You'd also use it to set your zero point in um, this direction as well. And for the Z direction, you can use, um, you know, whatever end mill you're going to use. You can use the um, post-it note test, which some people do. You take a post-it note and you lower this down and then you wiggle it. And when it stops wiggling, this has effectively touched it. You can also move in from the side, slowly move up until it just barely slides over top. You can also use something like a known value distance like this, slowly slide it down and just wait until you can just barely slide it underneath. And then you know your distance from here to here is exactly this much away. And then you just adjust that out. Um, so that's how you use, um, you know, one of these manual edge finders. There's also, um, you know, wigglers and things like that. Um, you can go on YouTube and um, check out a bunch of different videos on that. They just kind of wiggle, and then as soon as they hit the edge of it, um, they stop wiggling, and then you know you found your edge. Another thing that you can use is the passive probe. I really like this. Um, it's a little probe that has a um, movable head on it and this little tiny stylus. And in the Pathpilot interface, it has a couple of uh, macros and buttons that you just position it here. It automatically jogs it over, finds it, and then zeroes it off. And then you do the same for this direction, and you can even plunge it down into it to do that as well. It has a series of contacts here in the top, and when this moves even the slightest amount, those contacts are broken, and through the cable that's plugged into the machine, it then notifies the machine that this was activated and then it zeroes it out with the offset of the little ruby tip. So the passive probe's really cool. It's a little bit expensive, 250 bucks, something like that, but it's worth it. You can set up the X, the Y, and the Z on a part like this in seconds, whereas, you know, something like this, it's gonna take you a few minutes. So it just saves you a lot of time and it is a little bit more repeatable and a little bit more accurate than something like this. So definitely check out the passive probe. The electronic edge finder is cool too, but ultimately what we're trying to do is we're just trying to find out what this zero point is, and that will now become our new coordinate system. My original intention for doing this whole video was to explain tool offsets. And finally, with all that backstory and everything else and all that base information out of the way, we can finally talk about tool offsets. Very simply, if I have these two tools and I'm using them in two different operations for the machine. Let's say this one I'm going down engraving and this one I'm going to do a contour around the outside. I've set my zero point, my Z0 as here, let's say. But if I set it with this tool, that means Z0, the spindle head, is going to be all the way up here. And when I swap out this tool, it's going to be here. This is no longer Z0. That should be down here. So what an offset is, is it's just a um, relative difference between these two tools. So these tools are, um, let's say, two inches different in length. So let's say this one would have an offset of zero, just for the example, and this one would have an offset of negative two or two inches. That would mean that when this is measuring zero, this one would be measuring positive two because that would be where it would be in relation to where the other tool zero is. In most controllers, Mach 3, uh, Pathpilot, and others, you have a tool table. And what you want to do is you want to go in, you want to specify what all your tools are. Like this one is a eighth inch um, ball mill and you would want to put in there eighth inch ball mill, two holder, whatever, and you would measure it um, with a height gauge or something like this. Um, you can also use the machine um, to measure it just by doing um, any of the techniques I talked about earlier, but you would actually measure the distance from here to there. You'd measure the distance on this and you'd measure all your tools and then you would use some kind of known value, whether it be the passive probe. Um, there's a couple techniques that Tormach talks about where you lower the head down onto like a one, two, three block, something like that. I have links to those videos in the bottom. This video would be way too long if I talked about all of that stuff. But essentially a tool offset is just a relative difference in one tool to the next. So when you do one operation and you switch to the other operation, you can swap out the tools and you know that the machine is accounting for the difference in the length of the tool. So it's like, okay, I was using a really long tool that was like three inches long. 
Now I'm using one that's only one inches long, so I'm gonna shift that whole thing down two inches. And that's all a tool offset does. And when you put together your CAM software and you um, write the program in CAM or by hand, it calls out the specific tool number the machine recognizes that tool number and knows the applicable offset to apply based on the tool table and the offsets that are set up inside the software. The final thing I want to talk about in this video is CAM. In the uh, tool chain of going from an idea to creating a part, you have CAD, which is the design of your 3D. Like if we're just making a cube, this would be our CAD model, it would be just a cube. And then CAM is the other side of it, that is what turns that model into machine coordinates or G-code that then tells the machine what to do to do the motions. You know, for a 3D printer, CAM would be your slicer. The slicer is what slices the model up into the individual slices, and it tells the machine where to move for each one of those slices. For the laser cutter, the CAM is quite simply that 2D path of where to move the laser to cut out the um, part that you're making. And for a CNC milling machine, it's a little bit more complex, but it's a very similar concept. You're just telling the machine where to move that bit and in, you know, where in your work coordinate system to move it so that you cut out the appropriate amount of material. Uh, for something like a uh, milling machine, it's a little bit more complicated because you've got a lot of expensive options. You've got like HSM Works, HSM Express. You can use those as plugins in SolidWorks. You've got the um, Fusion 360 CAM package, which is essentially HSM, and that's a separate piece of software that you need to spend a little bit of time with to create that toolpath. For all of these machines, the toolpath is just generated as G-code. Uh, G0 is just a rapid command that says uh, G0X1 would be to move as fast as the machine can in the X direction to 1 whatever that one is, whether it be inches or millimeters, um, you know, you set that for the machine. And then a G1 would be a feed rate move where it would cut at a specific feed rate. It would be slower, and that would be actually the cutting speed. So G commands are just that. They're just these simple little commands. You have a huge list of them, and the machine or the uh, cam software creates a list of these commands, and that will tell the machine how to move. Some machines have a hardware interpreter, like a uh, 3D printer or laser will have a hardware interpreter, something like uh, Mach 3 or Tormach, those uh, Mach 3 or Path Pilot, those are software interpreters. They interpret those commands as software and then send those signal out to a controller. And that's really all CAM is. It's just creating that instruction set of where the machine needs to move. So if we look at that in terms of the tool offsets and the work coordinate system and all that, we need to specify where the machine sees zero. So we already know kind of how to tell the machine how to do that based on, you know, setting these different points and the tool offsets and all that. But when we create the cam, it needs to know what we told it earlier. So in the previous case, we were using this as zero, zero, zero. We just need to set that up as our coordinate system or the origin in the cam software and then when we load it into the machine, the two of those talk and the two of those know what they're doing. And it's in the CAM where you specify what tool you're going to use. The machine recognizes it and it applies its own offset. So it's really that simple. It's a lot of things just kind of working together, but your machine just doesn't know where this piece is. You have to tell it not only the machine, but then you also have to tell it in the CAM as well. Hopefully this gives you a better idea about what a work offset and a tool offset really is and how to use them on a CNC milling machine or other machines for that matter. Um, I did kind of gloss over some of the stuff like CAM and um, how to actually properly set up a tool table. There's a lot of great videos out there. I know Tormach has done a couple. Um, John Saunders from NYC CNC has done a ton of really great CAM videos. So check the description of this video for some other resources and we'll see you again in some more future videos.